Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. This is Vincent Chan. In this lecture, we are going to continue our learning around the sinusoidal oscillator and change the circuit from the Winbridge oscillator to what we call the phase shift oscillator. So phase shift oscillator is a problem solving lecture. So this is the circuit of phase shift oscillator. So basically it's an inverting amplifier is composed of two things. The first one is the inverting amplifier. You see the inverting input for the up amp. And then the three, the third order RC network. The third order RC network. So based on the model of a sinusoidal oscillator, the blue part corresponds to the amplifier, and the purple represent a frequency selective network. So again, you take two things. Inverting amplifier combined with a third order, third order RC network, and bind those, tie those two into a closed loop. And it's going to form a phase shift oscillator. So the concept is very simple, okay? How many phase degree, phase angle, uh, does an inverting amplifier provide? 180, right? So you go through an inverting amplifier, 180. So what about we only use the one RC, 90 degree? And what about we use the two RC network, 180, right? But it's going to be impossible for any finite frequency to pass a second order RC network to create the 180 degree phase difference. So three is the minimal number. So three is the minimal order for a signal passing through an RC network, a frequency selective network, and which can create another 180 degree to make the whole circuit satisfy so-called Barkhausen criterion at the frequency of the oscillation. So this is the key concept behind this. So three is the minimum number to create, put this on your note, is the minimum order to generate an 180 degree phase shift through the frequency selective network. You might be wondering, what about four? Can we do four? Yes, you can, but you bring yourself trouble, right? You make the circuit more comp even more complicated. But anyway, three is the minimum. Three is the minimum number. So now, so our job here in this lecture is the problem solving is to solve this circuit. Answer two question. So number one, what's the frequency of oscillation? So number two, to initiate to activate the oscillation. What's the minimum value for the feedback resistance RF? So I didn't put this on the slide, so put this on your note. So question A, I'm asking you to solve the frequency of oscillation. Of course, it's going to be decided by the frequency selective network. Number two, what is, so question number two, what is the minimum value of the feedback resistance RF to ensure the oscillation will start? To ensure the oscillation will start. So of course, now I'm going to ask you to solve this. But first of all, you have to solve the loop gain. Loop gain. So try to solve. I think the tough part is to solve the loop gain. So once the loop gain is found, then it becomes uh, easy to just meet the criterion from the Barkhausen, so-called Barkhausen criterion, to answer the quick question. So now I give you 10 minutes. So let's try to pause the 10 minutes so take a screenshot of this circuit, and let's try to solve this. It's not very easy, right? So I think uh, if you this is your first time you face the phase shift oscillator, I think you're going to struggle. 
you're gonna struggle, right? Uh, let me just quickly, because uh, it's what makes this complicated is the three RC network, right? Third order RC network. Okay, so let me uh, try to teach you uh, a skill. When you face a circuit where the loop gain is kind of challenging, finding a loop gain become a challenging task, then you can use this skill. You can apply this skill. This skill is to do this, okay? Is to break the loop. First of all, what is the loop gain? You start somewhere within the loop and go around the circle. If you start here and go around the circle and grab to collect the game. And then let's say if you start here and uh, if you start one, let's say if your initial condition is one, then you turn around the circle, you find out when you return the same place, you got five. Then what is your loop gain? It's five. And if you put a testing voltage, then you go around the circle and return to the same place. You find out the testing voltage has been grown to, let's say five times the VT. So what is your loop gain? Five, right? But the question is how where is where is the best place to start? You see that's the up end, right? So I would recommend, of course, any place you can start any place. You can start the top of R, you can stop the 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 left side, you can start anywhere within the loop. But the, but the smartest the breaking point, the starting point will be here, you start here, you put in a testing voltage and you let the testing voltage, testing voltage VT go around the circle and you try to find the return. Remember the return, the VR and the VT is the same, is supposed to be the same signal, same place, right? So you try to find the return signal. If we with a testing signal. And you go around, let the testing signal go around the circle, you try to find the return signal and find the ratio between VR and the VT. But make sure this is equivalent to the loop, original loop, okay? So which means you have to add a purple impedance which is the same as, which is, which is what? Which is, and you put this v, ZT, connect, you put this ZT at the output of the up end, like this. Why, why you do this? Because I said, although it seems the loop is broken, but actually it's connected. In other words, this, this, the left, the, the left hand side of the circuit is exactly the same as the right hand side of the slide. So these two are equivalent to each other. Okay, if you do this, do what? If you connect the ZT at the output of the up end and the, which is the impedance looking by the testing generator. So what's the value of the ZT? Because the inverting terminal of the up end is the virtual ground. So then it's gonna be C in parallel with R. So let's start from the left, left hand side. C in parallel with R, and then in series with C, then in parallel with R again. Then finally, it's gonna be in series with the C. So that's, it, it, that's a little bit complicated, right? But that's the ZT. But although it's complicated, but why I say it, the smartest the breaking terminal, the smartest the thing to do is to choose 
the smart starting point, the break point. Why? Because the value of Z thing kind of is relevant here, right? Because you can take advantage of the, the up end. Because if the up end is ideal, the upward resistance is zero. That means what? That means the VR is going to be independent of ZT. Okay? So let's just move forward. So think about this. Uh, if you don't get this, so just put down this, what I just said on your note. VT is, will be independent of ZT, and you think about this as we go along. So now, let me start to try to, the, the major task is to, to, for this lecture is to solve the loop gain. So what is the I1? Easy. Virtual ground, so VR divided by IF. So then you can try to find the V2, V1. So V1 is the virtual ground deduct the I1 times the capacitance impedance like this. And then you can get the I2. So I2 is the negative V1 divided by R like this. And then the sum of I1 and I2 is going to be I3, right? So it's simply adding these two get together, and uh, it creates the I3. Common factor VR over RF. Then what? Then you can solve the V2. So V2 is the V1 deduct. The current I3 times the capacitance impedance, like this. Right? So V1 deduct the I3 times the 1 over SC. So now you have the V2, then you can get the I4. So I4 is negative V2 divided by R. Easy, like this. Easy, right? So now 3 plus 4 equals 5. So I3 plus I4 equals I5. So with the common factor of VR divided by RF. So now you have the I5, so the last step is going to be link the V2 and the VT together, because V2 is embedded with the VR. So then you put the two variable together and which is cover the whole, the essence, the whole characteristics of the loop. What I meant was this. You simply write down V2 equals V2, no, no, no. V2, you simply write down V2 minus I5 times 1 over AC equals VT, like this. All right, let me repeat that. So VT equals what? V2 minus I5 times capacitance impedance. So see the highlight equation. So we, what, what we have done is this. We use the one equation to put the VT and we are within the same in equation, and this equation involves the, all the element of the loop. Touches this equation has touched all the element, involved all the element of, of the loop, and put it into the one equation. So the ratio between what? The ratio between VR and VT give us the answer. The ratio between return voltage divided by the testing voltage is the loop gain. So the next step it will be replaced as with J omega. But the denominator of the loop gain seems a little bit so ugly. So let's try to times the let's try to rationalize the numerator and the denominator by multiplying the J like this, okay? Right? 
Uh, I just multiply J and multiply what? W, C, R. So then C, the real power of the denominator becomes 4. So then the loop gain is this. So let's try to satisfy plug in the Brockhausen criteria. So first, Brockhausen phase criteria. That let's kill, let's eliminate the imaginary part. So this will give us the highlight, the purple highlight. Let's command, let's eliminate the imaginary part of the denominator. This will give us the frequency of oscillation, right? And then the second criterion, Bachosen criterion for magnitude at frequency of oscillation. The magnitude of the loop gain has to be greater than or equal to unity. So omega squared C squared RIF divided by four must be greater than or equal to one. So this will give us the minimum value of RF, which is the second question I ask you. 12 R, 12 times R. A frequency of oscillation, this is the first question, the answer for the first question. This is the answer for the second question, 12 R. It's the minimum value of the resistance to make sure the oscillation will start when you turn on the supply. So the purple, the, frequencies, the frequency of oscillation again is decided by the third order RC network. In other words, at this frequency, the third order RC network, network is gonna generate how 180 degrees. To make sure you go around the circle, the phase angle, the phase shift is zero degree. Buckholzen criterion for phase. And the 12 R, the minimum resistance of IF is decided by the blue part at the frequency of oscillation. Make sure at this frequency, then the magnitude of the loop gain is greater than or equal to one. Now, so we have homework here. I encourage you to solve this. This is your homework. The circuit, the lecture, the problem we solve from this lecture is this, right? right? Then I want to ask you if we add one more additional resistance, additional resistance, which is the same as the R within the frequency selective network, how the answer will be changed how the answer will be changed. We just add one additional resistance. And with the rest of the component, the circuit unchanged. The rest of the circuit component remains the same. Just one more resistance. How the answer for the frequency of oscillation will be changed and uh, the minimum value of the RF to start to make sure the oscillation will start will be changed. So this is your homework. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thanks for watching.